Hey, I'm Zach Farnham, and we're here in the heart of Nashville, Tennessee. The Honky Tonks of Broadway are a few minutes that way. Music Rose right over there, and the Grand Ole Opry's just a hop, skip, and a jump over the Cumberland River. Being in Music City sure does have its perks. We're the first to know about a lot of great things coming your way in country music. Have you ever heard of CMA Fest? Yeah, we play host to that every summer. The lineup has just been announced, and the best of the best will be performing, from Chris Young to Luke Bryan, and Miranda Lambert to Zach Brown Band. Highlights definitely being Blake Shelton and my personal favorite, Rascal Flatts. Check out our website for a full listing as more and more artists are announced in the weeks to come. Tin Pan South Songwriters Festival is in full swing this week. Joe Don Rooney of Rascal Flatts, Vince Gill, Larry Gatlin, and most of the songwriters who write all of the hits you know and love will be performing all week at various locations around town. Our people are on hand to give you all of the highlights throughout this week. So check out our website for more on that. One of my favorite people, Vince Gill, is going to be a grandfather. His daughter, Jenny, recently announced her pregnancy. Congratulations, Gill family. I can't wait to see the baby. Stick around, because after this commercial message, Brandon Chase, former voice contestant and up-and-coming country music artist, will be on hand to talk with us. You ever get a craving for a good hot dog, like from the streets of New York? But you're in Nashville. Well, head on down to our Broadway and get yourself a dog for the best hot dog card around. Dojo's on the corner of 2nd Avenue and Broadway. Whether you're going down to get a pair of boots or leaving a honky tonk at 2 a.m., Old Bill will serve you up the tastiest hot dog you've ever had. Dojo's. That's country, you guys. <laughs> So, what's it feel like to uh, be back in Nashville after being on The Voice? Oh, you know, it feels great. Nashville is my second home, and uh, it's always great to be here, and I always look forward to it, so it's been great. So the last season of Voice, season five, you're on Team Blake. What's Blake, Blake Shelton like? Uh, Tell us. Blake, I mean, Blake is just Blake. Um, you know, what you see is what you get, and uh, it, it's just really cool to have met him and to be able to see him off camera and just to see that he's the exact same off camera as he's on, so mm -hmm. it's great. So you went into, well, you had to go through an audition process, right? Oh, oh yeah, um, you know, that audition process is a lot longer and, and, uh, and grueling than what you see on TV. You know, there's, there's like five rounds before the actual blind audition, so it was a good good half year before before we got to an audition for the negotiations. Cool. Now I've heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but is it true you can't tell people if you made it? Yeah, that's very true. You actually you can't even tell people that you're like auditioning. Um, really? Yeah. So we were out in LA and they're like, even if you have family here, you can't even tell them you're here, let alone, you know, obviously you can't tell them you're auditioning. So we're like sequestered in this hotel for months and we have to eat the same three or four restaurants every single day and you know, we can't leave the, the premise of the hotel. We have to just stay and you know, all, all you can do is really go down to the, the lobby and just kind of chill, go to the pool. So, so you really got to know all your time. fellow contestants? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We had what we called kumbaya sessions out by the, uh, by the fireplace. Um, that was like, it wasn't even like every night, it was like every day, like all day. There was somebody out there playing and, and just jamming, so it was, it was fun. And everybody just became family. So yeah. cool. Do you still keep in contact with a lot of them? Uh, there, there's a few, like uh, a few a few that I got really close with that I still keep in touch with. And um, uh, other than that, I mean, you know, everybody's kind of busy, and you know, I know I'm busy, so it's kind of hard to stay in touch with everyone. But, you know, I try to as much as I can. So I want I watched your Wanted performance. You performed Hunter Hayes Wanted for your blind audition. And you're walking up there. What What are you feeling? What are you oh, feeling? Man, uh, I'm feeling like the whole world just hitting me at once. I was just I was so nervous going up there because it it's unlike any other performance. Um, you know, you try to prepare yourself for it mentally, but once you like walk past that door. Uh, to head towards the stage, it just, it just kind of all hit me like a hurricane. Um, I just felt all the, the wind and the, the water and all the debris hitting me at once, and 
it was just overwhelming, but it was just amazing how as soon as I, I stopped in the position on the stage, um, it just kind of all just just went away and just kind of freed me up to, to be able to perform. Um, probably not my best, because I was the, the nerds didn't completely go away, but they went away enough for me to, to rein it together and to, uh, to perform good enough to make a team at least. So. Good enough to yeah. get Blake Shelton to turn around in 30 seconds. Yeah. So yeah, did you good. go into it wanting a certain judge to turn around? Oh, um, you know, I, being a country artist, I definitely wanted Blake, you know, because, you know, before anything else, we already had that connection, uh, being the same genre. And, you know, I knew there was a ton that I could learn from him because uh, he's been in the business a long time. And, um, he didn't just make it overnight. You know, he, he grew his career, and, um, you know, there's a lot to say about that. Just the determination and, and the drive to keep pushing through all the the, uh, the disappointments and letdowns that I'm sure he's had throughout his career. So um, I knew that there's a ton that I wanted to learn from him. And, uh, you know, it was amazing that he turned around and, and that I was able to pick him up as coach. Cool, cool. Well, all right. So then you went from the blind audition and you went into the battle round. It was the battle round. And who was your the mentor? Mentor was Cher. That's so cool. Yeah, you know, um, it's it was just kind of crazy walking into a room and with two superstars. You know, and Cher's just she's an icon. Um, you know, somebody that doesn't need a last name. You know, they're a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you just say Cher and you know who that is. Exactly. So it was really cool being able to, to meet her. And I'm sure get she her had feedback. a lot of good tips. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny and interesting. Her and Blake had uh, had different views on things, and uh, Cher would say one thing, and Blake would disagree, and Blake would say one thing, and Cher would disagree even more. So, it, but it, but it was fun, and, and uh, they they both they both met well, uh, but they just had different different styles and different uh, different techniques. Cool. Well, let me uh, let me read some of the comments on. Uh, video of Wanted on YouTube. Um, he's amazing. One, I love this song. Hunter Hayes is my favorite singer. Two, Brandon Chase is my other favorite singer. <laughs> Three, this was my favorite. Dude looks like Sean Spencer from the TV show Sight. <laughs> that is so weird. I don't get that at all, but it's really funny you say that. My guitar player sent me, he like cropped like two pictures, like one of me and then one of that guy. I can't remember his name. James Rode? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Like, he put us like right next to each other. He's like, I found your doppelganger. I'm like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> I don't see it. But, that's <laughs> funny. That's one of my favorite shows. So. Yeah, I love so much, like, too. You guys crazy. So, what I got from those comments as a whole is you have some pretty good fans. I do. I have the best fans, honestly. Like, I know everybody says it, but I, it's just been incredible the way that people just come supporting me. And, you know, whether I went through one of the or not, like they just they didn't care. They stuck with me and continued to show me support through it. So it's been really awesome. It's a good thing about country music. We talk about it a lot in uh, these interviews is how great the fans are. Yeah, there's no fans like country music fans. They'll just, stick with you through the thick and the thin. That's right. Ask Randy Travis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so rewind back before the voice Born in Arlington, Texas? Arlington, Texas, yeah. Never been there. I've never been to Texas. Yeah, Arlington is like the home of home of everything. Um, okay. we're, we're proud. We, uh, we have the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, the Texas Rangers Stadium, um, Craig and Harbor, Six Flags. So pretty much any anything you want to do fun, then you should get you to Arlington. Sounds like a good place to grow <laughs> up. Yeah, it's, it's a great place. All right, so you have an amazing story from the they even born. So can you go yeah. uh, A couple days after I was born, uh, I started bleeding internally, and that, that led to me stop stop breathing 64 times in 12 hours. And you know, the doctors told my parents with that lack of oxygen that um, they should prepare themselves for the worst. Uh, I could be blind, deaf, mentally challenged, or you know, all three of those things combined. And um, you know, they said I'd be on machines for, for like all my infanthood. And, I'd never be able to play sports, and I'd be slow learning in school, and I'd never be the same pace as my classmates. And um, it wasn't what 
six months later, I believe, or, or maybe even less, I was off the machines completely. And um, it's breathing on my own. And growing up in school, I, I was always you know, top of my class, making good grades, A's and some B's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I always played sports, and I excelled in sports. And before I found music, baseball was actually my passion. I thought I was going to do that for the rest of my life. I was going to be a, a pro ball player. Um, but it, 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 through all that, it's just, it's just been really awesome. And I graduated high school at 15 and, and graduated from Berkeley School of Music at 17. And I don't say any of that to brag about myself. I, I say it because I truly believe that I'm a miracle and that um, you know, God has a purpose for me. And, and uh, all that happened so that I could share with people and, and encourage others that you know, nothing's impossible and when the odds are stacked up against you, it really doesn't mean anything that you can overcome. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about is I, I look back at some of your past interviews and even some of your performances and you really have a strong base in God and I really like that. I think it's good for artists to go into the business um, with that mindset like God's always there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, I, I wouldn't have started music without my relationship with God. Um, I started my church youth group and, and uh, I was just interning and, and just serving any way I could. And along this two year journey um, of, of serving in that, that capacity, there was auditions from a youth band. And um, no, no music experience at all. And I just felt like it was what I was supposed to do. I, I didn't know why, but I just I just heard a voice saying, this this was designed for you. It's what you're meant to do. And I just took a step of faith and did it. And um, I just fell in love instantly started to teach myself how to sing and play piano and started writing along with that simultaneously and um, I basically stopped playing baseball that, that same year because I just knew that music was what I was going to do for a song. Wow. Alright, well, well who, you should mention that music is your calling. Who's uh, some of your biggest influences? Uh, my, my biggest my number one influence is Keith Urban. Okay. Yeah, just, I love his music. Um, he's a great writer, a great singer, great guitar player, phenomenal. Um, and, and I've just, I haven't had the opportunity to meet him yet, but I've heard he's just an outstanding guy. Just super cool down to earth. And, and uh, you know, I, I really respect that. Somebody that is, you know, at the top of the, the top of the field in, in their craft and, and still has that humility and, and uh, you know, the ability to just care and give to others. Cool. So, where do you, what are you doing now? Where do you go from coming off the voice and being uh, seen by tens of millions of people? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm working on my, my debut album, and uh, it's going really well so far. And, uh, I'm loving what we're, what we're doing in the studio. I released my first single, One, uh, three weeks ago, and it's doing really well. It's, we just got news this past week that it's in the top 100 charts for uh, Music Row, and it's, awesome. it's climbing pretty fast. And uh, you know, we're just excited to, to see see where it goes, and, and everybody's really accepted it, and uh, has sent me amazing feedback saying they love it, and you know, sharing it with their friends, and calling the radio stations, and it's just been it's been amazing. Okay, great, great. Um, I think we're gonna hear that in a couple of minutes. Yeah. I'm looking forward to. Um, what, do we have a release date for the album yet? Um, not an official date, and I hate saying even like a time frame because I don't want to disappoint people if it's not out by then. Because uh, we're definitely we're going for quality, you know. We're okay. not going to rush anything and make sure it's out by a certain time. But I'm hoping before the summer's over at the latest. But uh, I'm really hoping, you know, sometime early summer. Good. Yeah. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, I can't wait to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Recording it here in Nashville? I am, yeah. Working with an incredible producer named Sean Giovanni. Okay. At the record shop, and uh, he's done a lot of cool stuff with John Rich and the farm and just a bunch of cool people. So we're having a good time and we just, we've, we've connected on a really great level musically and professionally. So it's just it's a lot of fun working with Cool. Now, we, we asked our uh, viewers if they had any questions for you, and I, I just compiled. The biggest question we got, okay. is there a love interest in your life? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> no, there's not. Um, no love interest. Yes. Yeah. No. I'm uh, no interest. No. All right. Well. We'll take applications on our website. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, um, where can we find you online? Uh, my Still website, on. yeah, my website is brandonchasemusic.com. And um, if you want to just go there, you can go there and find everything pretty easily. I have all my, all my links right there. But Twitter is at brandonjchase. And then pretty much everything else, Instagram, Facebook, um, You're or YouTube. You're a huge Twitter. Yeah. It's like a full-time job. Uh, yeah, I'm on it all the time. But all, all those other links are Brandon Chase Music. So. Cool. Well, we'll post it all right below this video, so check that out. And click on those. And, uh, Brandon, I think we sh I think you should perform now. All right, let's do it. Okay. Well, right. <laughs> right now, let's take a look at a preview of our next guest artist on Music City Live. Miss Jeannie Seeley. Next time on Music City Live, Miss Country Soul, Jeannie Seeley. Jeannie has been a member of the Grand Old Opry for 47 years, is noted as being the first woman to host segments on the Opry, and has written and sung numerous hit songs throughout the years. We're so excited to welcome Jeannie and her side-splitting humor to our studio for an in-depth look into her career and country music history. I'm Jeannie Seeley, and that's country, y'all. We're back on Music City Live, and here's Brandon Chase with his new single, One. Girl, I've been knowing since the first time That you shot me with them blue eyes You have me spinning like a coaster ride Going round and round and round Left unsaid, break loose what's in my head. I gotta get this off my chest right now. So let me just lay it on now. Let me cut to the chase. Gotta break it on down. Tell you what I gotta say. Give you one night, one ride. Roll with me across the countryside. Give you one song. You moonlight, you won't forget. Just a little sip, and you gonna drown. Get you all hooked, keep you coming around. Give me one chance to make it start, take off and run. Baby, all I need is one. All I need is one. I know I might be coming on strong. I've already waited too long We gotta keep this rolling on tonight We've been talking long enough So don't let that sun come up We gotta take this chance on love Before the moment's gone So let me just lay it on now Let me cut to the chase Gotta break it on down Tell you what I gotta say Give me one night, one ride Roll with me across the countryside Give me one song, a long kiss A windshield moonlight you won't forget Just a little sip and you're gonna drown Get you all hooked, keep you coming around Give me one chance to make it start, take off and run Countryside, give me one song, a long kiss. I wish you moonlight, you won't forget. Just a lip sip, and you're gonna drown. Get you all hooked, keep you coming around. And give me one chance to make a start, take off and run. Baby, all I need.
should too. Check it out. iTunes. iTunes, yeah. yeah. iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, wherever you buy music. Great. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, it's been sure. a pleasure. Can't wait to see you soon. All right. Thanks so much, man. That's country, y'all. <laughs>